So after a few big, uh, well, medium failures, I guess, for Apple TV Plus in theaters, their new film, Wolf, was initially just pulled back from a wide theatrical release Mm -hmm. to something that is, you know, a lot less interesting. (laughs) So basically, they pulled it from a wide, long theatrical release to one week in select theaters and then go straight to streaming. Now, if you don't know about Wolf, Wolf is going to be the spinoff of Ocean's Eleven, starring Brad mm. Pitt and George Clooney. This is going to be a relatively like this. This is like a a noteworthy film, right? Yeah. So they've recently clarified as to why they made this decision, and it's not just with this movie. All right, it's actually a shift in the how they do business across the board, somewhat, right? So we've heard Netflix uh, months ago did their Netflix films division into like four or five separate genre categories. Mm -hmm. They lowered the budget of their films and they're doing more content for less money to hit a larger variety of genres. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to read through some of this to give a clarity as to why Apple is pulling back and also to understand a little bit of their business practices, and then we can discuss from there. This is some of what we've already predicted, but let's go ahead and go through this. Apple is clarifying its broader film strategy moving forward. Um, Remember when the tech giant pulled a switcheroo on Wolf, yeah, just uh, like a month ago, yanking it from wide releases to one-week theatrical run before hitting streaming. Turns out that wasn't just a one-off. After a string of expensive films like Napoleon and Killers of the Flower Moon, underperformed at the box office, the tech giant is changing course. The new plan, they produce just one or two big-budget event films a year for theaters, while most projects will be capped at $80 million and head straight to Apple TV+. This move comes after noticing that streaming-only releases like The Instigator are actually driving more subscriber growth. So, And then with Hollywood facing a tough year, box office is down 13.8%, da-da-da-da-da. So we've kind of covered this in the past where we've per- predicted that the old model of theater box office Hollywood in the world of streaming with those two mix – something's going to give and fall. And it Mm -hmm. seems as though we've had this constant back and forth where Disney can't seem to make their streaming work, right? (laughs) And then you got Apple TV Plus arguably can't make their streaming work, but their real problem they're saying is the theatrical issue, you know? And then you got Amazon Prime, which probably is way stronger with streaming, but they're trying to make these big theatrical things. Or at least they plan to, as we just touched on like a week or two ago. I'll tell you what. Uh, from my perspective, it's a good move. Uh, uh, pull back on your budget. Um, make something that's a little bit, you know, more. I don't know. If you're going to make a movie that's less accessible to broader audiences and you are only going to have it, you know, on your streaming platform, it should be a lower budget. It also gives directors and creatives kind of the ability to see what they can do with uh, less money. I mean, we saw what can be done with $15 million with Godzilla Mm -hmm. minus one. Um, And we've also seen what can be done with, um, you know, what 180 for the acolyte. So Mm -hmm. I think 80 million is is a pretty good number. The other issue I'm seeing is Apple hasn't pr- been producing stuff that's broad appeal for the movies, right? right. right. Uh, Napoleon and Killers of the Flower Moon are not broad appeal movies. You need broad appeal movies in order to make money. You can release the artsy stuff and... And, and you're going to get whatever you get from that. But in order to support those projects and in order to support the, the, the directors and actors who are going to be in those projects and are going to be demanding the higher sums of money, uh, you need big, broad appeal, fun, 
blockbustery type movies, which we're, we've sort of lost a lot of that um, in recent years. We haven't seen too many of those. And Apple's running into this problem where they don't have the money to support uh, the more artful style films that they've been producing. I mean, if you go look on Apple TV Plus, look at the stuff that's on there. Right. Uh, the TV shows are all um, pretty high concept um, or artful type stuff. You're not seeing any, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Family Guy or Ricky right. Morty or anything like that. You, right. you're, you're seeing people who are putting passion and effort into stuff. Uh, and that seems to be what they what they want to produce. Yeah. yeah. But and it, it, they're just not a, making any, they, they don't have anything that's making money. Um, it, it is interesting um, that what do we want? What are the, what does the audience want? Do they mm -hmm. want a, you know, big, big film or do they want a show out of a spinoff show off this, these movie franchises? And also it's interesting. I, I feel like more recently, People are realizing, especially in like, I know this is off topic a tiny bit of like, people are realizing like stand up comedians that they can, instead of going to Netflix, they can just put their stuff out on YouTube and, right. and it'll, they'll basically own it except for whatever YouTube takes. Mm -hmm. And they're doing huge things like this for Apple TV. What, what? I, I guess I don't really have have know what, but where do you want to put your 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 content on Apple TV, mm -hmm. or do you want to try to go to like a Netflix? I think there there's when it comes to the streaming versus the theater issue is I it's still in limbo and it's going to be in limbo for probably a while because ultimately they have to make money and. Really, the only one that seems to be pivoting early and figuring things out in the streaming world is Netflix because they've been doing it the longest and mm -hmm. uh, I, their whole business model is built around streaming. And so when they pivot, it makes sense. Uh, everything else like Apple and and Disney, they always are reactive to something that they jumped into quickly. Now, um, this what's interesting is just a like, two weeks ago, we were talking about how, which I don't know why it might have not been here, but me and Joshua talked about how Amazon Prime Video, their future goals are to release 17, I believe it's 17 films in movie theaters annually, okay? Ugh. So basically, Amazon Prime Video wants mm. to be the top dog in theaters while everyone like Pixar, right? We're doing three movies every two years. Mm -hmm. And Apple TV, we're doing two movies in theaters a year. And then everything else is going through streaming. They're trying to figure each one out. And in doing so, they're cutting back on their theater experience. Whereas Prime Video is upping the ante by saying, I don't know if it'll last. They might hemorrhage money. But they are basically saying we're trying to shoot for 17 films in theaters a year. So every month and a bonus one each month for like holiday films and stuff. Probably. It might be it might be pretty smart if other companies are sort of pulling away from theaters and your yeah. movies are the ones that are in there. Like the majority of the movies that are in there. I mean, people you get the see. views. Yeah.